Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's and I've come to look at a Ford Transit. Now we'll get inside and do a bit of explaining. So I've got the vehicle running here, the engine management lights on. Now, I'm going to answer the questions here for, we'll put the title to this video on what the problem is he's having. So he's had a mechanic out here, um, obviously not showing you who it was because I don't like putting people's names on stuff. But anyway, they've done diagnostics, DPF codes were found, they can't fix the problem. Now, forced regenerations uh, were, were tried on this and they failed. So the answer, the question is, why is it failing? Why is it failing forced regenerations? Um, we'll answer that question. Let's put the diagnostics down in front of you. I've got the launch Euro Tab 2 here. And let's see what codes we have. We have cylinder glow plug, cylinder glow plug two, three, four. What else have we got? Particle filter soot restriction and engine oil is deteriorated. Now, engine oil deteriorated can happen normally, but most likely that's happened now because someone's tried to regenerate the van more than once or even once. You know, you regenerate your van or a car or whatever vehicle it is. If you, reg if you do a forced regeneration with a diagnostic scan tool, you're gonna contaminate your oil. So please do change it. Um, it's just every single day I'm seeing people call me out. Uh, yeah, it's it's had four, re it's had four forced regenerations and it, it's failed them all. Um, you know, I've even seen other mechanics make videos saying, oh, it's failed the first regeneration. So let's try three or four times and hopefully it will, if we keep force regen and it, it will clear it out. If you fail the first one, it's going to keep failing. And I just, uh, I tried to, to give the advice to try and avoid doing force regenerations. And if you are going to do them, make sure and change your oil every time you do a force regeneration. So this is why it's not doing the forced regeneration because you got this fault and you got these faults here now of course again I'll, I'll mention I did have people comment before oh the glow plugs on a Ford Transit are, are not related to regenerations you don't need the glow plugs as far as I'm aware every vehicle needs glow plugs to do a forced regeneration now people say that about a Ford Transit because a Ford Transit has a vaporizer system in the exhaust which works as a glow plug it's got a glow plug on it and a fuel injector and that works in the same way that a glow plug would by heating up the fuel and injecting some more fuel in to the dpf to clean it but as far as i know the glow plugs are still needed and even if they're not helping for the regeneration if you've got these codes here your van is or vehicle is not going to regenerate because it's it's got it's got open codes so now i'm left with the case of I can clean it. I can clean it without doing a regeneration. We're going to clean it without doing a re regeneration. But uh, I, did, I did give this advice before, and not on YouTube, but TikTok seems to have a lot more uh, keyboard warriors saying, "Yeah, he doesn't need his glow plugs. You've 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 changed his glow plugs for no reason." Uh, because in my experience, if you don't change your glow plugs, the DPF will get blocked again. And I've I've had it in the past. I've been to, to vans where the guy is saying, look, I've had it cleaned and it was working. It's perfect for two weeks. Now it's blocked again. And you go inside and you got the glow plugs. I'll repair these glow plugs, clean the DPF, and guess what? The problem don't ever come back. So what we're going to do is clean the DPF today. I didn't realize I was coming here for glow plugs because the only code I was told it's got is P2463. Now it doesn't just have that. Of course it has this as well. And the customer was told none of this is related and it doesn't need fixing, but I do. So if you're asking the question, why is your vehicle re not re doing a force regeneration or you, you set off the force regeneration, it'll work a little bit and then it cancels off and said it's failed. Um, the general rule is if you've got any codes within the engine saying you've got faults, the general rule is you, you're not going to do a forced regeneration. It's not going to work. And if you've got open codes anywhere in your engine, at some point or another it's going to cause the DPF to block up. So get all of these engine codes fixed and then your DPF should work normally. 
So the reason we're going to do now, we're going to clean the DPF because we are going to come back once we've got the glow plugs in stock, we're going to come back and change these before the DPF gets blocked again. Right, so let's get along with the repair. We'll go into the data stream and show you what we're doing. So go to differential pressure. Now, of course, this wasn't checked either by the previous mechanic. What he did check was the DPF percentage at 182%. Now, that makes no difference whatsoever. That percentage is just a calculation shouldn't really be paid attention to. What should be paid attention to is there. HPA or KPAs is 3.5. HPAs, you got 34. 34 on idle. We'll accelerate it up. And hold it around about 3,000 as close as possible. So you got like 220 HPA there. So where we want this sitting is we want that to be around about 10 or under. And on acceleration, we want it to be under 80. Uh, so yeah, we're way above the limits what it should be there. So we need to get that lower down, these numbers. Put it on a little chart there so you can see. So you got the chart there running around the mid 30s. We'll accelerate it up. That's where we're sitting around. So we're gonna clean the DPF and then we we'll look at these figures afterwards. So what we're gonna use is some of this launch DPF cleaner here. We'll get that injected into the DPF directly without doing no force regenerations. And we'll do that with our compressor here hooked up to the gun that goes with this fluid, which is this launch DPF gun. Now what this does is that forces the fluid in to the DPF at 120 PSI of pressure and it also injects air along with it. So it injects air and the fluid directly in and it foams the fluid up and that works at almost 100% success rate. Well, I say it's been a 100% success rate for me. Now what some people try to do is obviously there's, there's a lot of mechanics that offer a service of regenerating the DPF. They don't do DPF cleaning, but because they've got a scan tool that can do DPF regenerations, they offer regenerations for, you know, 80 quid, 100 quid to do the regeneration. Cleaning it, obviously we're using fluid and we're using a lot of expensive tools. It's a little bit more expensive, but you're doing the job properly and you think you're saving money by doing regenerations, but actually you're not because when you do a regeneration, the van then needs an oil change, which then works out more than the cost it's going to cost to me to just clean it. So when I clean it, you don't need to do an oil change, but with a forced regeneration, you do need to do an oil change. So what I'm going to do is pour half of this bottle into the bottle. Into the gun there, pour about half of it in, and then we'll top it up with about 50% of water, or maybe 40%, roughly that area. So, what the water does is when that's forced through the gun with, with the mixture of air, it helps it oxidize and helps it foam up, which then will agitate the soot, soften it up, and blow it out. Now, Ford Transits are particularly a difficult vehicle to clean because they have a Courier Light DPF, which is a lighter, cheaper material than some DPFs. So what we'd normally do with these is we're going to do this half of can, fill the DPF while it's sitting, and then we'll do the other half while the vehicle's running. So we're going to do two stages on a Ford Transit. So I'll explain to you another reason why a Ford Transit... Uh, won't do a forced regeneration. Now this only applies to Ford vehicles or some other vehicles that has got the Ford system uh, which has a vaporizer. So if we can continue all the way up here we have a vaporizer system. So on these front wheel drives it's quite high up. It's just up there we have a vaporizer system that injects the fuel into the DPF. And there it is just up there. So if that vaporizer isn't working, your forced regenerations won't work either. Now if you want to see more information about uh, vaporizers, we've done plenty of other videos on them. 
but it's got a vaporizer system up there and a little fuel pump over here that injects the fuel up to it. Now we'll just switch it on if you can hear it pumping. So what I'm doing here is heating up the vaporizer because it's seized on it won't open so I'm gonna put some heat on it to try and get it open. Sorry about that, we've got a, quite an, an, an annoying alarm going off over there. But we've got the DP, uh, DPF vaporizer now cleared out. We've got that connected onto it there. And there's no pressure, which is how it should be. That is a midivac pressure gauge there I'm testing that wood. So now we've got the vaporizer cleaned out. We're going to do a vaporizer prime. Again, that same thing that we done earlier where we showed you the fuel pump ticking. And we'll get a little timer there come up like that. And you'll hear the fuel pump ticking. And if you've got the vaporizer open, you should see some fuel dripping out of it. We've got the vaporizer on now. And how we can show you, you can test it without removing it, is once this is finished ticking, if we start the vehicle up, we should see some slight smoking coming from the exhaust. So how I've cleared out that vaporizer, I couldn't get the vaporizer removed, it seized on. So what I've done was connected this uh, DPF gun. It's 120 psi of pressure comes out of this. Connected that to the fuel line, and I've had the heat gun on it to get it hot. Blow the pressure through it, and it's cleared it through. So I've managed to clean it without removing the vaporizer. So a vaporizer that is blocked, you'll usually get something like this. And a vaporizer that isn't blocked, you shouldn't get any pressure whatsoever when you're moving it. Now that's finished, we'll just start the engine. We'll uh, give it a few revs. And now the engine temperature must be up to the operating temperature there. Now what you should see there is a little misting of smoke. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera. more visible there now. So you can see the first time we tried that, that didn't do that, so that's why we cleaned out the vaporizer. Now we know the vaporizer is working. We're getting the misting of vapor there coming out. So now the vehicle is up to temperature. I probably mentioned it before with these four transits. Once they get reach operating temperature, let me just see if I can... These are quite sensitive. They do increase the pressure does increase slightly once it's uh, up to operating temperature. So if we, the, the van is in restricted revs at the minute, so it won't pass 3,000. So we're on 250. Right now, while I was doing this vaporizer, trying to blast out the vaporizer with it connected to the vehicle, I noticed quite a uh, interesting fact about these two guns. So I've got the one from launch there, and this is the old one I was using from JLM. And I noticed that the DPF gun from launch has about five times as much pressure coming out of it as that one. Uh, I'll try and show you that on a separate video. So now we'll get to filling up the DPF with the cleaning fluid. We're going to open the pressure sensor holes here. And we'll get the fluid squeezed in, pull the trigger. And you see the white fluid there going all the way through, and that'll just fill up the DPF there. Then we'll uh, pull off the tube. Let that settle down. And then connect back up the tube there. Now we'll get the van lowered down there and we'll let that sit, fluid sit there for around about 10 minutes. And I've actually gone a bit ahead of myself there because uh, I'm going to do two doses on this, I forgot. So we'll get the van raised back up, ready for the second dose after this is done. So we're going to see how it goes now with the fluid in there and we'll see if it needs a second dose. If it doesn't need a second dose, we won't do it. If it does, we'll, we'll do the second dose. You can just see the pressure there dropping. While we're holding the revs, 3,000. Now 
sort of leveling out now a bit. That'll keep coming down. And what it does is it kicks out a little bit of soot there like that. A bit of foam, that just dries up. You know when you get into one of these vans where you don't even like accelerating it because it just sounds like a bag of nails. The engine just doesn't sound very nice and it doesn't look like it's been taken care of. Hasn't been having oil changes regularly, I can t just tell. So the pressure is even out there, so we're going to do a second dose. Transits always need this. So the vehicle's running, and now we'll carry on with round two. Get that in there while the vehicle's run. You see the fluid now turning a cleaner colour. So now we're going to switch the engine off, let the fluid sit a little bit and we'll go to the power control modules. Actually before we do that, let's just go back to data stream. Uh, D is in under DPF, system percentage. Let's have a look at the system percentage, what he said it was at. And I'll tell you something about this. What a lot of mechanics are doing. Uh, forced regeneration, oh look your DPF is at 195%. After we clean it, it's at 0%. That, these numbers do not mean anything. Um, of course, if your DPF pressure is high, the numbers will be high, but if you get the numbers down to zero, it doesn't mean anything. And I'll show you why, because you just reset it in here. Reset the particle filter learn values. Now that's done. Switch the ignition off, go back. Now, if we go back to the data stream, DPF zero percent. So we've just fixed the DPF without doing anything. Now, if you do that without cleaning your DPF, your percentages are at zero. But they'll quickly rise back up after 20 minutes, half an hour of driving. You'll go back to 200%. So what that does by allowing, resetting that to zero, it will allow you to then clear the fault codes. If you clear the fault codes without resetting the DPF values, uh, give it a minute or two, or sometimes almost instantly, you just recheck the codes and the codes are back. So now you can see we have no DTCs. In the next two days, we're going to do an oil change and glow plugs on this, as long as the customer does what he's promised and calls us back to do that. Now you can start the vehicle up and you won't have any codes on it. So if we go back to the retrieve the codes now, we should have the oil one back. Oil deteriorated. So what you're going to do for that is switch the ignition off. Hold your foot on the brake and accelerator at the same time, turn the ignition on, wait for about 15 seconds and then it'll reset. After that's been done you can then clear the code. Now we are changing the oil so that's the only reason we're doing this. And then you'll notice after the engine's running we can go back and check the codes and that oil deterioration code should be now gone. Now we have idle. 3.5 So that's going to keep coming down as you can see there I've got around about 62 now on 3000 RPM uh, 3, three and a half on idle so that's plenty good enough. That will lower down even more once the fluid has done its job complete. We've been running the vehicle for a few minutes. Okay, that's it. We're all finished on the transit and we'll see you on our next video.